Hey, it's Bill Danny Man up here in Northern California. How y'all doing? Okay, we're going to talk about the Whirlpool Direct Spark Ignition System. And so you'll hear my smoke alarms chirping in the background. I need to feed them battery one of these days. Um, so this particular spark system is not a glow bar spark system. It's not a glow bar ignition system. It's basically a spark system like on a spark plug. Most of you probably already know. So what we're gonna do is okay. So it looks like I got a little, got half a battery. Anyway, the uh, spark ignition system, uh, the main components are, is like three components. Basically, the spark electrode, the gas distri distribution valve, also known as the safety valve, and the electronic control board. Um, here's going to be kind of, I'm going to run this back through, you, through here uh, real slow, and, and you can run the program a little bit slower if you want. Uh, theory of operation. What I'm having a problem with is the oven. Now this is what your utility company may shut off if you're having a problem, so you gotta make sure that is turned on. That is your gas distribution valve shut off. Okay. <coughs> there is the gas distribu distribution valve, and the terminals are different size terminals. Okay, and we're not talking about converting to propane at this point. But those are the instructions. Uh, direct spark ignition control. Okay, so this is basically your module here. Um, I'm going to probably slow this down so you can review it. But I'm going to briefly go through it here. I'm not concerned about the countertop because my countertop's working fine. But there's the information on that. And thanks to Appliance 411, Appliance Repair Clinic dot com for supplying me with the um, information here repairclinic.com it's a great website you ought to try it out anyway uh, there's the electronic schematic now I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to the flow chart so the troubleshooting flow chart Here it looks like you can check some voltage going to it. Uh, okay, so here's the test on the uh, distribution valve. <coughs> um, so you can review that. Uh, and so it looks like, what? Two uh, set on 100 ohms scale at uh, times 100 ohms, resistance times 100. Touch the terminals. The ohmmeter should read on the what on the broil terminals one and two broil ohmmeter should read 216 plus or plus or minus 30. Touch terminals two three and four terminals three and four you can see here what terminals three and two see these are the terminals here the smallest one looks like on top there. Uh, is number one and going down from the circle. Okay, touch the meters to terminals three and two, and the ohm meter should read 216. So basically, you should have 216 ohms plus or minus 30. Okay, so that's how to check that. Easy enough. Okay, there's your wiring diagram. Strip circuits, bake and broil. Oh, it's a clean cycle. And let's see, here's your flow chart. Okay, cook, cooktop. Okay, we're not going to go through that right now because I don't have a problem with that. And here's the bake flow chart. Now, the bake flow chart basically does not bake cycle function properly. Check polarity of the power supply. Okay, so. They're emphasizing here that it's important, especially if your oven is ticking, constantly ticking, 
um, it's important that you check the polarity of the socket and the plug in the socket. You get one of those little things at Walmart, plug it in, see if the polarity is correct, see if you got ground. I've experienced this before, um, and basically it will have problems if the polarity of the socket is not correct. Now, I'm going to try and get, put this up here as close as I can and go through it slowly. I'm not going to read it because my battery is about ready to die. Okay, let's go through this again as a uh, enlargement here. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, there's some information for you. And we're going to scroll down here slowly. Okay, here's the flow chart. Okay, so the bake. Okay, so basically, they're talking mainly about uh, check the polarity. They're talking about trying to find the voltage at J1 between J14 and J16. Should be 120. There goes the phone again. Hello. Hello. Okay, sure. Uh, what's the problem? Okay, um, so you're up in... But in any case, thanks for watching. And I do service up here in Northern California and give phone advice for a fee. If you're interested, you can contact me, 707-443-8347 Pacific Time. Okay, so that's the end of the flowchart.